Does DeSantis, who has vowed to be the most pro-Israel government in America, also ordered state universities to disband campus groups with ties to National Students for Justice and Palestine organization amid nationwide student protests over the Israel-Hamas war? Floridians, your governor has been compromised. He is not Florida first. He is not America first. Are you listening? Your governor has been compromised. Your governor is acting on behalf of a foreign state. I'm going to purse my words very carefully with this subject. Zionism and Judaism are two different things. Zionism is a political ideology. Judaism is a religion and it is a religion based on acceptance and peace and love. And Judaism also, if you look at the Torah, I have read the Torah, which is basically the first five books of the Bible. If you read the first five books of the Bible, you know, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, uh, then you basically read the Torah, right? With that being said, the Torah talks about you were once foreigners in the land, so you be good to the foreigners that are coming among you. Zionists don't believe in that. Um, so with that being said, also, not all Jewish people are Zionists and not all Zionists are Jewish people. Examples of Zionists that are not Jewish, Kamala Harris, J.D. Vance, Donald Trump, Joe Biden, Tim Waltz. They're all Zionists, but none of them are Jewish. Okay. There's an infiltration in our education system of Zionists. I'm pursing my words very carefully that are trying to control our education system here in Florida. And there's a reason why I put Ron DeSantis there because Ron DeSantis is going by the will of foreign agents. These foreign agents are part of the Zionist occupation in Palestine. Well, Let's take a look at this article here. I think this needs to be spoken of, especially in regards to the state of Florida. So this is out of the Miami Herald. Florida universities ordered to reveal all, review all courses for anti-Semitic and anti-Israel material. So let's get into this. Says the leaders at Florida's 12 public universities have been directed to do a statewide review of all college course materials containing keywords pertaining to religious and political issues in the Middle East with the goal of tagging content that may contain anti-Semitic material or anti-Israel bias. When they say anti-Semitic, they mean anti-Zionist. But they conflate Zionism and Judaism together. Remember, I said Zionism and Judaism are two different things. They're not the same. Even rabbis, Jewish rabbis, have even said so, right? So when they're saying anti-Semitic, they're actually saying anti-Zionist, Many, most of the time. Now, I will say this. We do have to be very careful because some real anti-Semites will use the issue that's going on in Palestine as a way to weasel their way in to be real anti-Semites. And this is what we have to be careful of. Real anti-Semites who will demonize Judaism and demonize actual Jewish people because they're just hateful bastards, right? We do not want to be in community with them. This is why you have to be very careful. This is why when it comes to talking about issues like this, I will listen to people like Dr. Norm Finkelstein or Professor Norm Finkelstein. 
I will listen to people like uh, Gaijin Girl, who I've had on here, Lee Camp, who I've had on here. Um, I'm trying to get on Aaron Mate, but listen to people like him. Listen to people like Max Blumenthal. Listen to people like Dan Cohen, right? Listen to people like Katie Halper. They will let you know that Zionism and Judaism is not the same thing. People like Miko Palette, who was born in Israel, will tell you that Zionism and Judaism are two different things. So listen to those people. Listen to p groups like Jewish Voices for Peace and If Not Now, When. Listen to those groups because they will let you know that Zionism and Judaism is not the same thing. And also, I this has to be hammered home. When people keep talking about Jewish people and they keep demonizing Jewish people, those are the real anti-Semites. Okay? Be careful about being around those type of people. All right? Now, it says the directive comes a month after the state officials were made aware of an online course at Florida International University had offered students a test with multiple choice questions that were deemed anti-Semitic. Ray Rodriguez, the chancellor of the state university system, said in an interview with the Miami Herald on Tuesday morning. He said what prompted this question that said Jews invented terrorism, Rodriguez said. In response, Rodriguez said each university is being asked to organize a faculty committee to sift through curriculum materials such as textbooks and tests in college courses for either anti-Semitic content or perceived anti-Israel bias. Rodriguez said faculty committees should err on the side of caution when reviewing the content for, for potential bias. Now, something tells me that this was, I'll, I'll just say this, there have been some Zionists Remember, I'm cursing my words very carefully. There have been some Zionists that have spray painted and swastikas and then go, see, see, they're anti-Semitic against us. When in reality, they actually did that in order to drum up support for Zionism. Something tells me that somebody did this on purpose in order to try to gear things for the imaginary state in favor of them. Every accusation is a confession. Something tells me. I could be wrong, but something tells me. It says, if they find anything on either front, they will need to notify the Board of Governors so we can determine what the appropriate action is depending on what they find. Also, my question is, have they found any questions conflating Arabs with terrorism? And if they have, are they doing the same thing for Arabs? If they found anything equating Black people with crime, or with gangs, are they going to be doing the same thing for those of us black people? Are they gonna have the same type of energy for us? Just asking. Says so some Florida professors are already raising concerns about the new directive saying it could potentially suppress open discussion of the ongoing Israeli-Palestine conflict and public higher education institutions says this represents yet another effort to water down education in Florida and to keep important information from our students. These concerns come as Governor Ron DeSantis has increasingly pushed to disrupt the state's education and establishment to challenge, sorry, yeah, to challenge what he perceives to be a left-leaning ideology in higher education. It says during his administration, state officials have taken steps to eliminate spending on initiatives that promote diversity, equity, and inclusion, removing sociology from the state's general education requirements and transform the new College of Florida into a bastion of conservatism, among other things. Now, let me ask you this question. 
if you are for freedom of speech and open dialogue and talking about things that you don't agree with when it comes to certain people and having a diversity of thought, if you actually agree with that, then why do you side with somebody who is stamping down on this? Watch people squirm when they try to justify this. Watch people in the comments squirm on this. Oh my God, you're trying to indoctrinate and you aren't? What do you think church is? What do you think Sunday school is? Is that not indoctrination too? Ooh, -hoo, squirm. Go ahead, squirm in the comments. But yeah. Is indoctrination in itself wrong? No. No. You can indoctrinate your kids to be kind and compassionate. You can indoctrinate them to be caring. The question is, is that indoctrination that you're doing harming people who are not harming others? That's the question. Is that harming people's freedom? I, when I was deeply religious and I was uh, evangelical and I went door to door preaching for years, one of my friends at the time, Roberto, I remember this, he said, true freedom means that you do not encroach upon the rights of others. True freedom means you do not encroach upon the rights of others. If you're encroaching upon the rights of others and those rights do not diminish your rights, then why encroach upon them? Let's continue. All right. Says DeSantis, who has vowed to be the most pro-Israel government in America, also ordered state universities to disband campus groups with ties to National Students for Justice and Palestine organization amid nationwide student protests over the Israel-Hamas war. Floridians, your governor has been compromised. He is not Florida first. He is not America first. Are you listening? Your governor has been compromised. Your governor is acting on behalf of a foreign state. If this were China, would you be just as alarmed? If this were Iran, would you be just as alarmed? If this were Russia, would you be just as alarmed? If this were North Korea, would you be just as alarmed? You should be. You should be. because you literally have foreign indoctrination in the state house in Tallahassee. Yes. You have Zionist indoctrination that is happening in our state house and now trying to do it into our schools. If this were China, y'all be up in arms right now. In fact, if somebody is in the Democratic Party, oh my God, they're controlled by China. You guys don't want your elected officials to be controlled by a foreign entity. And yet you got one right here in Florida. You got one right up there in Tallahassee. Oh, by the way, your senators are also compromised too. Marco Rubio and Rick Scott, they're also compromised as well. What do you think? What do you think, Floridians? Hmm? Are you comfortable with having iPad and J Street 
and all these other Zionist lobbies that are controlling our elected officials in our state? Is that fair? If there can be a Israel lobby, then there also should be a China lobby. There also should be an Iran lobby. There should be a Cuba lobby. There should be a Venezuela lobby. There should be a Japan lobby. There should be a French lobby. There should be a Canadian lobby. But if you're going to stop one, you got to stop all. See, we got to be consistent here. Anyway, let's continue. That the new directive explain says in an email sent out Friday, Rodriguez directed the state university leaders to flag and collect data on any course that contains the following keywords, Israel, Israeli, Palestine, Palestinian, Middle East, Zionism, Zionist, Judaism, Jewish, or Jews. This process will ensure that all universities are reviewing the same courses and nothing falls through the cracks. Email university, I'm sorry, each university will be required to initiate a faculty review of the course materials to be completed by the conclusion of the fall semester, according to the email. Committees tasked with reviewing such materials are being told to focus on courses on terrorism, Middle East studies, religion, and government. The materials will still be made available to students and faculty during the fall semester while the review is ongoing. So, this is, like for instance, the book says Terrorism and Homeland Security by Jonathan White and Stephen M. Chermak. It says once the review is concluded, the faculty committees will be required to report all instances of either anti-Semitism or anti-Israel bias to the Board of Governors, a 17-member body that oversees and manages 12 public universities in the state. The vast majority of the members are appointed by the governor. Education Commissioner Manny Diaz Jr. is also a member of the board. We need to see exactly what's in the textbook. Does it violate the statute? And if it doesn't, does it contain bias? Here's my question. If it's going to contain a, a pro-Israeli bias, there's a bias. If it's going to contain a pro-Palestinian bias, it's going to contain a bias. If it is pro-America, it's going to contain a bias. So our textbooks inherently contain So which bias they're picking and choosing, they're cherry picking. History is written by the victors. History is written by the colonizer. Let's continue. So Florida defines anti-Semitism in state law as a perception of Jewish individuals which may be expressed as hatred towards such individuals and any manifestations of anti-Semitism towards Jewish people, their property, community, and religious institutions. Now, here's the thing, right? It says state law also includes long understood examples of anti-Semitism, like calling for the death or harm of Jewish people or denying the genocide of the Jewish people at the hands of Nazi Germany. Okay. Now, remember I said Zionism and Judaism are not the same thing. They want to equate Zionism and Judaism, but it's not. Even David Ben-Gurion, the first prime minister of Israel, talked about how they were basically settler colonialists and that they were going up against 
the indigenous population in Palestine. So therefore, talking about Zionism is not the same thing as Judaism. Theodore Herzl, what they regard as the father of Zionism, by the way, an atheist, knew that they would be taking over a land that wasn't essentially theirs, right? Says the state definition of anti-Semitism, which was developed by International Holocaust Remembrance Alliance, also includes more contemporary examples like criticisms of Israel which have been controversial in some academic circles. So the so law says it would be anti-Semitic to claim the existence of the state of Israel as a racist endeavor, or to require a Jewish state of Israel, a standard of behavior not expected or demanded of any other democratic nation. Seven, five years ago, the state of Israel started began to exist before that it was palestine the reason why many jewish people decided to move there was because it was pushed by zionist groups especially in england england was cool with zionists leaving to occupy another land that is already inhabited because the English, especially the people at the upper echelons of the English government, were anti were were anti-Semitic. They did not like Jewish people. They wanted Jewish people to get out. That's why they were like, okay, go go ahead over there and go to this land that's already occupied, that's been occupied for generations by the people who have been living there the entire time. Because they were real anti-Semites. It says, it continues. What would constitute anti-Israel bias may be more subjective. Rodriguez said that it would be up to subject matter experts to determine. If there's a question of whether something is biased against Israel, we will bring it to those who have expertise to do that review. The FIU test question, which came from an online course textbook called Terrorism and Homeland Security was first flagged and labeled anti-Semitic by an X account called Documenting Israel. The test questions ask students to identify organizations that have invented terrorism. After the test question became public, Representative Randy Fine, the only Jewish Republican lawmaker and state legislator, called on the university to fire the professor who taught the course and described him as a Muslim terror supporting employer. Even though it was the wrong answer to a question, the fact that the question was asked triggered them. It says FIU did not immediately respond to Harold's inquiries about the test question. Rodriguez said that the state is already working with Sengage, the publisher of the textbook, to resolve the issue. Our assumption was that every question that was put before a student was reviewed by the faculty member before it was put before a student. What we learn is that's not how it operates. That's why Rodriguez said that the incident with the test question will also lead to another action. He said state leaders are crafting new regulations that will require faculty members to attest that they have read their course materials, all the resources, in the course materials, whether the textbooks or supplementary before they have assigned them. The only reason they're being discussed at the same time is because there was this anti-Semitic material that 
revealed that we don't have faculty that actually go through each textbook. He said, we assumed that was being done. It says, this story was produced with financial support from Trish and Dan Bell from the donors comprising the South Florida Jewish and Muslim communities in partnership with journalism funding partners. The Miami Herald maintains full editorial control of this work. So, with that being said, that's what's happening in Florida. And for people who say um, that our governments are not uh, under control, not I wouldn't say under control by other states, but it's being heavily influenced by other states, this is it. And they'll talk about, oh my God, the interference in our elections by Iran, right? They'll talk about the interference of our elections by Russia. But who funded candidates to beat Jamal Bowman and Cory Bush? What state sponsored, defeated those two Democrats? Was it not IPAC? IPAC is working on behalf of what state? I thought we were against interference in our elections. And yet, we have Zionist interference. Every accusation is a confession. So when it comes to the duopoly, uh, you can have Kamala Harris. You can have people like Donald Trump. They're also compromised as well because they are being pushed by a foreign state. Kamala Harris gets IPAC money. Donald Trump gets money from Israel. So this is why I say leave the duopoly. By the way, there's a Jewish person actually running for president that is outside the duopoly that doesn't get money from Israel. Her name is Jata Jill Stein. There's somebody that you can support. If you don't want to support Zionism, you can support the Jewish woman that actually supports a full nationalization of our healthcare system that actually wants to legalize marijuana. <laughs> that actually is for uh, privacy. That actually is for reparations. There you go. So just then, and she's Jewish. Nice lady. I've had her on this channel before. So be mindful about who you support in the state of Florida. Be mindful of who you support in your cities and your counties. And we got to continue to keep doing our research because we want to make sure that we're not supporting somebody that's compromised. Thank you so very much for watching my channel. And I deeply appreciate it from the top and bottom of my heart. If you wish to support the channel further so I can keep bringing you content that is educational and informative, you can become a patron on patreon.com forward slash jbfon. You can find that link in the pinned comment or in the description below. No matter what you give, you'll be supporting independent media and education that helps make the world better. Thank you so much. And you can watch more of my content here. Mwah. Forehead kisses and have a beautiful day.